Hey friends, Carl here again with Calm Survival. And this time we're talking about folding knives. Now, one of the important things to keep in mind is that even though a folding knife can definitely be the sole factor in your survival plan, and in fact, most of the knives that I you know, keep stashed in kits are folding knives, do need to know your uh, local legal conditions. Now, where I happen to live, it's very easy for me to carry a Swiss Army knife because they don't lock and they're actually specifically exempt because of their obvious utility purpose. Gotta love some legal language sometimes. But it's important to just know whether or not you can carry a locking um, or a one-handed or two-handed opening folding knife. It's just something that you need to do the research on before you get yourself in trouble. What I do want to focus on is opening and closing. So this first one up top here, this Spider Co, has the characteristic and trademarked spider hole. Now you'll notice I have a few. This is my preferred way to open and close folding knives. It just happens to work best with my size of hands. And in general, I find that my finger placement is a little bit, um, it doesn't need to be as precise. Okay. Where the manufacturer decides to put the stud for opening, if it's got a raised surface, is very, very critical. Now, I do have some knives with thumb studs, and sometimes I do really like them, but I find that I take more of a gamble with this kind of a knife than I do every single knife I've had that has a hole to open it they've all worked for me. Okay. So that's for our one handed opening knives. It's going to be either something protruding or some kind of a hole. Next, we're going to talk locks. We're going to start with the oldest possibly and the simplest, none at all. This is a slip joint knife. You can see that as I close it, this back spring bar is pushed up and just provides tension. Okay. It's the way most Swiss Army knives work as well, pretty much. And basically, what you've got is just a knife that holds itself open. Pretty simple, pretty easy. I think that more people worry about them snapping closed than should, as long as you're being careful and you don't pull the knife back towards you in a way that could close the blade, you're going to be fine. Just think about the direction you're going. Everything is going to be just peachy. Then we've got this Opinel, which is a friction folder. Okay, There's nothing that holds the blade except friction. Okay, That's not true. If you know anything about Opinels, once you get to a certain size, they have this twist ring that will also hold it closed. Okay. Not super strong, but strong enough. And more often than not, these guys are my go-to for, you know, having a picnic knife, something like that. Okay. Just because they're super thin, they cut really well. And that just disappears back into your pocket. Nobody gets too worried about it, which is honestly, it's a thing to consider. Other people are important too. This one's a bit of an odd one. Okay. Victorinox slide. So you just slide the button down and close it up just in case you ever come across them. Not super common, but they are around. Okay, now getting into more common, the back lock, lock back, mid lock, different names for essentially the same thing. That button pushes down in and then the blade closes. All right, probably most people have come across one of these 
in their life. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Super, super, super common. Fairly confident the patent on that thing ran out like a hundred years ago or something. So very, very useful. Extremely strong, extremely durable. A really good choice for uh, keeping costs down on a knife. They're simple to produce. They are somewhat um, self-adjusting in that the tolerances don't have to be quite as tight. So they're really good. Now we've got what is called an axis lock. There are several kinds of lock that are similar. Basically you have a crossbar that runs through that has to be slid towards the back. Now this can be a large ball. It can be just on one side, kind of a lever, but basically pull it back and close it. I like these because in general, they leave the blade free enough that with only one hand, you can generally get them closed. To hold that, I'm actually just hooking my fingers in under the pocket clip, just kind of palming it a little bit. Okay. Useful in a lot of situations to be able to put a knife away one-handed and you don't have to, like with our back lock, you, you can kind of, but you end up with your fingers in the way. Can be done, takes a little bit more practice. Now, I only have one example of a liner lock. Okay, not my favorite, just for various reasons. Some people absolutely love them and there is nothing at all wrong with them. They're just not my cup of tea. So you push down and that pushes the spring away so that you can close the blade. Sometimes that spring will be the entire side scale or part of the side scale of the knife. Then those are usually referred to as a frame lock because it's locked in the frame of the, of the handle. But a liner lock or a frame lock, they work essentially the same. But of course, internet pedants do get mad if you name them wrong. Okay, just had that one out, but another little access lock. And then this one works exactly like that liner lock, but it's on the back. So we can see it more on that side of the knife. So we're going to push in and then be able to close the blade. This is called a compression lock. Okay. It's a Spyderco thing. Again, you can, if you are dexterous, be able to close that with one hand without getting your fingers anywhere in the way of the blade. Now, From personal experience, that part of your finger does take a while to heal. So as much fun as it can be, and a lot of people do buy one of these knives and they start getting a little fidgety with them. Yeah, they make a good fidget toy, but um, keep your first aid kit handy. Just, you know, from those of us who have been there before. All right, friends, I'll catch you on the next one.